Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we delve into the fascinating world of Diophantin equations. Get ready to delve into the beauty of these equations like never before and witness the power of unconventional thinking in mathematical exploration. Are you ready? Let's dive in. So we have x3 plus y3 plus 1 equals 3xy. And we are supposed to find the positive integer values for x and y. So how to go about this problem? What do you first notice when you see this expression? Well, let us just bring everything to the left side first. We have x3 plus y3 minus 3xy plus 1 equals 0. What do you see when you look at this problem? Well, you have an expression based on x and y. And in order to solve this problem, well, the best thing you can do perhaps is to somehow try to factorize it. But is there something you can do when you go about the factorizing this problem? Well, sure, maybe there are different ways to factorize this problem. But the first thing you notice about it is it is symmetric. This expression, if you call this S, S is symmetric to, with respect to X and Y. Okay? So, that can help me because now I'm going to uh, consider a change of variables. And whenever we have an, basically, whenever we have... Um, a symmetric expression based on two different variables in algebra, such as x and y, we can uh, benefit from a famous change of variables in that we take x plus y to be something like sigma and xy to be something like w. And as a result, I can write s to be, well, first of all, we use cubic identity to simplify that, then I can write it x plus y to the power of 3 minus 3xy times x plus y. And then I have another xy plus 1. This is equal to 0. And I'm just going to replace x plus y with uh, sigma and xy with w. So then I get sigma 3 minus um, 3 sigma w minus 3w plus 1 this is equal to zero. Okay, now I have a new equation based on sigma and w. Again, what do I notice about this? If you look at these two guys and also these two guys here, you see that if I just reorder the terms, I get sigma 3 plus 1 minus 3 sigma times sigma plus 1. This is equal to zero. And there is also a factor here, sigma plus 1, in, in the first um, terms. And I'm just going to take that out. So I have sigma plus 1 times sigma 2 minus sigma plus 1 minus 3 sigma times sigma plus 1. This is equal to 0. And I'm just going to factorize this based, based on sigma plus 1. And then this gives me sigma 2 minus sigma plus 1 minus 3w, this is equal to 0. Okay, now I could write my equation based on the multiplication of two factors. But you remember, sigma was x plus y. And if x and y are supposed to be positive, so sigma is definitely positive, right? It cannot be. The basically, the problem wants us to find positive integer values. So it means this term here is definitely greater than zero and cannot be zero. So the only way that this is, is zero is basically is when the second term is zero. It means sigma 2 minus sigma plus 1 minus 3w, this is equal to zero. Okay, now we have come all this way. And now probably you're wondering how can this help me find x and y? I will tell you how it can. So, let's go back to the definition of sigma and w. What was sigma? Sigma was x plus y, right? So, we had x plus y. This is equal to sigma. 
Do you agree? Hopefully, yes. So, and then x, y was w, right? And if I look at this equation here, I can find w best based on sigma. And this is basically equal to 1 over 3 times sigma 2 minus sigma plus 1. Do you agree? Okay. Now I have x plus y to be is equal to 0. Uh, sorry, sigma. And x, y is equal to this term here. And I'm trying to find x and I'm trying to find y. So it is like kind of trying to find the roots of a quadratic equation, such as, for example, z minus x times z minus y is zero. Because we know that, yeah, if we solve an equation like this and x and y are the roots, then um, basically this gives me z2 minus x plus y, z plus xy equals zero. So in other words, trying to solve this system of equations here is very similar to trying to find um, the roots to this equation. So we're just going to do that. And instead of x plus y, I'm just going to write uh, sigma 2. So I have to basically solve this quadratic equation, z2 minus sigma z plus w equals 0. And if I find the roots of that equation, it is sigma equals sigma plus minus squared root of sigma 2 minus 4w over 2. But we know that this um, quadratic equation has an answer when its delta is greater than equals um, greater than equal to zero, right? So delta is basically sigma two. Sorry, I have to delete that. Sigma two minus four w. This must be greater than equal to zero, and I'm just gonna replace w, which I have based on sigma in that equation. Then I get basically sigma two minus 4 over 3 times sigma 2 minus sigma plus 1. This must be greater than or equal to 0. So this is w. I'm just, I just replaced that with w. And this gives me, if I just um, simplify it, uh, minus sigma 2 over 3 plus 4 over 3 sigma minus 4 over 3 greater than or equal to 0. I'm just going to multiply both sides by minus 3 and the direction will change so then I get sigma 2 minus 4 sigma plus 4 this is less than equal to 0 and well what is that that is basically sigma minus 2 to the power of 2 is less than equal to 0 so when does this inequality hold it holds only if sigma equals 2 otherwise it will not so only if sigma equals 2, I have two answers or two repetitive answers or just an answer to that quadratic equation and I can find x and y. So x and y from this system of equation can only be found if sigma equals 2. And what was sigma? It was x plus y equals 2. And we know x and y are integer positive values. So it means that this do you funding nonlinear do you funding equation only has an answer of x equals y equals one? So those are the only answers. I hope you found this video also insightful and engaging. If you enjoyed solving this do you funding equation with me, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. By doing so, you'll join a community of passionate learners and ensure that you never miss out on future math adventures. Thank you for watching and until next time, again, keep exploring the fascinating world of mathematics.